girls, welcome to episode 200 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I'm posting the video of this podcast on my main channel to celebrate 200 episodes. Now, a lot of people might think, Wow, why wouldn't you celebrate 200 episodes by doing a live show or by doing a live stream? And my answer to that is uh, live stream couldn't be bothered. Uh, And live show, Corona's cancelled everything. So instead, I'm thrusting my podcast upon the almost half a million subscribers on my channel, the vast, vast majority of whom do not listen to the podcast. And hey, you're welcome. And also, I'm sorry. Episode 200 of the show, if you're listening to this for the first time, welcome. It is about to get absolutely fucked. I have been saving some of the most horrific life advice emails that I have ever received in 200 episodes. That's four years, may I remind you. I have some of, I have what is, I'm going to say it, top three most horrific emails that I'm going to be reading out at miscellaneous bit at the end, right, of the podcast where I uh, read out email life advice and I'm thinking about it now and I can't even finish my sentences. That's how fucked it is. So that's coming at the end. Uh, But uh, before I, I get to do that, man, I've been I've been out there I've been out there uh, offending people right I need to uh, I need to apologize to someone that I offended I made them very angry by being myself okay and uh, to that person you know what I take it back I don't apologize because I'm just being me huh if you if you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve me at my best that's a great sentence said by a woman who is actually insane. If a woman ever says that, they're just insane. It's like, oh, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. It's like, bitch, when are you at your best? When you're posting motivational quotes on Instagram and then throwing plates at your boyfriend? I haven't seen your best. All I'm seeing is your worst, actually. Is that what you're, is that what you're trying to tell me? That I have to endure the worst on the off chance I might get you on a good day? Is that what you're saying? Because that, what's that smell? That smells like an abusive relationship, but, you know, that often does come with good pussy. So there's positives and negatives to those types of girls. If you don't deserve, if you can't handle me at my best, I mean my worst, you, you don't deserve me at my best. That should, be, that should be changed to, if you can't handle me at my worst, well, then I guess you're a stable person and you respect yourself and I don't deserve you. Please get me someone with a beard and a nice car who gets very angry, just like me. That's who those girls are. They're, they're, those those types of chicks that that you don't deserve me at my uh you don't if you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve me at my best type of women those chicks are the um bearded expensive car but dirty bedroom type dude you know like he'll take you out to a shisha bar uh but he'll never tell his friends that you exist you know that's, that's how far your relationship's going to go with that guy, you know. He'll take you out to a shisha bar. He'll let you sit in the passenger seat of his Mercedes, but you'll never meet his mum, you know. And, bro, if you don't deserve me, I mean, bro, if you can't handle me uh, at my worst when I'm screaming at you and denying your existence to my friends and also to my other girlfriends, then you don't deserve to ride in the passenger seat of my Mercedes, bro. And that's, you are that guy if you're, you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best type chick, you know? And you, those two are made for each other, you know? Because often they're just hanging out with each other at their worst, you know, like 95% of the time. It's kind of like, um, I wonder, you always see those relationships. You know where you see those relationships? You see them on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter every fucking day yelling about how much they love each other. Oh, my God, I love you so much. Dude, if you have to post that every week, someone's cheating because that's that's the, that's the fucking rule. If both of them or one of them are posting every other week, oh, I love him so much, he's the best, he cheated on you. And and that's that's how you re- that's just like a, you know when uh, when a dog pisses on a tree that's what that type of post is right but imagine if that tree was uh, was a woman uh, and and she also hated the dog but now we're kind of getting into R Kelly vibes guys I feel like I've really milked the end of this analogy and we're we're reaching like just 
levels of uh, of metaphor that have stopped making sense. So if this is your first time listening to the podcast, strap yourself in because we're starting off with one topic and then going down into a million different tangents that never end, don't make any sense, and very rarely link back to where I started. Now, back to where I started. I've offended someone, right? I was on... Um, I was on Omegle. We're doing some, we're doing videos, like main channel videos for the Luke and Lewis show right now, right? Which is not at episode 200. So fuck that show. We're here. Spearhead Sundays. That's where it's at, right? So we're doing Omegle videos for, uh, for Luke and Lewis. And I don't think I've, uh, I've ever sat down with a, with a fellow straight man and looked at that many dicks in a row. You know, that's a, that, that's a very unique experience that you only get on Omegle. I, I would wager that you see in an average browsing session, you see two to three times more dicks on Omegle than on Pornhub. For sure. Because when I go on Pornhub, I'm not looking for dicks, but I know I'm going to see some. Sometimes I might see a few, you know. I mean, that's not really my vibe, but sometimes you'll click on something, like, well, that's a good thumbnail. Oh, my God, disgusting. Porn clickbait is another level, huh? You know, sometimes I'll put tits in my thumbnail and, and, and that works for me. But, uh, you know, if you put tits in a, in a Pornhub thumbnail, you could end up, uh, you know, just walking in on, on, a, on someone that has tits and a dick. You know, that's fucking clickbait. That's dickbait. You know, I've been tricked. Guys, I feel like starting off episode 200 with uh, admitting that I've accidentally walked in a few times to the transsexual section of Pornhub isn't the best isn't the best representation of the podcast, me as a comedian or as a person. But uh, fuck it, we're here. We don't edit things out. It's episode 200. And, and that sometimes that's what you see, you know? You're like, oh, those are a pair of tits. They look expensive. This will be good. Oh, my God, it's bigger than mine, you know? <laughs> Horrific. It's not good. And that's why I'm not into fake tits, man. You know, they, it's like natural or go or get out of here. You know, I would rather, uh, you know what? Here's an interesting question. And again, probably not the best representation of my character, the podcast or episode 200, you know, I'm trying to get new listeners and then I've just fallen into this corner, uh, but I, now I can't get out. Would you rather write uh, someone with fake tits, but a real dick or real tits and a fake and, and real tits and a fake dick? What would you rather? I reckon uh, real tits, fake dick, because maybe maybe they have one that you could screw off, you know, just take it off and go for a, for a fucking ride. All right, guys. Let's, what was I fucking talking about? Oh, yeah, I was on Omegle. I reckon you for sure see way more dicks on Omegle than you do on Pornhub in an average browsing, if browsing the straight category, of course, as I do frequently, wink. Um, <laughs> fuck, man. Now, all right, whatever. Guys, I was on Omegle. Omegle's fucking needs to be shut down. Can we really, can we just admit that as a society? Whoever runs Omegle, hey, dude, it's over. End it. The website is fucked. It shouldn't be around, right? I remember when I discovered Omegle when I was like 14 and I went on it and I was just shocked by the amount of dicks. I went on there now, 11 years later. 12 years later, I'm 26, 12 years later, I go on there, I reckon there's more dicks. It's not good. The website's fucked. They thought they could fix it. I remember back in the day there was only one section of Omegle. You just go in and it's like it's like dick roulette, you know? It's dick roulette, but instead of there being one dick out of six in the chamber, there's just five dicks and then one child who will just hit skip on you because they don't want to talk to you. That's that's what that shit is, right? Dick roulette, but the odds are stacked very high against you, you know? You go in there and you're just fucking bombarded with cock. It's horrific. I was 14 and that's that's what molded me. That's what I am as a person. I feel like that's that's destroyed an entire generation of of children going on a meal, getting on bombarded with dicks, and then we grow up and people wonder why we're smashing windows, you know? Because we've got all those fucking dicks. We're scarred for life, man. That's I reckon that's that's the real difference between uh, Black Lives Matter's peaceful protesters and then the rioters, you know. Those Black Lives Matter's protesters doing it peacefully, they're, they're good people on the inside. They're trying to get stuff done, you know. They're trying to create social change. 
All of those rioters stealing TVs from Walmart just because they can, they've been destroyed by Omegle dicks, you know? That's why I would have been, you know, I would have been out there rioting. I couldn't help it, you know? Give me that fucking flat screen. I saw 70,000 dicks when I was 14 on a website when I was just trying to chat with my peers. I need a flat screen. <laughs> so I reckon that website needs to be shut down. It's, it's, too, it's too many dicks and too many kids. It got me thinking, like, I would have thought, because I hadn't been on the website for 12 years, I would have thought that, man, surely there would be less dicks because there's more opportunity to consensually show your dick to somebody else. Bro, that's what Snapchat's for, you know? Snapchat came up and everyone's like, oh, look at this great app to talk with my friends. Then Instagram stories came up. Now that's where you talk to your friends. Snapchat is exclusive, exclusively for nudes. It serves a purpose. It's not re- It's not the best app in the world, but it serves a purpose. It's exclusively for sending dick pics, right? That's what it's for. So Omegle, I felt like there would be less dicks on there because everyone would be on Snapchat, Tinder, Bumble, all that shit. There's a lot more avenues to uh, consensually send your cock to a, to a stranger, you know? But uh, there, there's almost more dicks on Omegle now, I think, you know? The only two things I saw when we were doing an Omegle video, just scrolling through Omegle for an hour and a half, was dicks and kids. I didn't see a single other adult. It, the only thing that Luke and I saw was either some dude wanking or a child going, you're too old to be using this website and hitting next. What are you looking for? More dicks? I would be like, oh, great, an adult with, with no dick out. I'm staying here at least for a breather. One kid, we, we get on him. He's like 15. He was pretty funny. He was from uh, West Virginia, right? No shit. This is not a lie, right? You'll see it in the video. We get on this kid. He's from, uh, we're like, hey, man, where are you from? He goes, yeah, I'm from West Virginia. And we're like, oh, yeah, cool. What's it like over there? He goes, yeah, it's, fu- it's fucking great. And, uh, and then he goes, you want to see something? You want to see something cool? And we're like, yeah, I guess. And he just pulls out a giant Confederate flag. <laughs> not a joke. That's a real person. I didn't know they existed. And he's like, and we were like, so what is, because I've got no fight. I've got no dog in this fight. I'm from Australia, right? So I don't really understand all of the history and the problems with that flag other than what I see on Twitter. So I'm like, oh, there's a guy who reps the flag. I can talk to him. And he goes, and I'm like, what, do, what does that mean to you? And he goes, Southern pride. And Luke goes, well, it's more of a participation trophy, isn't it? I mean, you guys lost the war. And he goes, yeah, that, that's true. And then he puts the flag away and not a joke. This is real. Couldn't be more of a stereotype. He pulls out a can of chewing tobacco. The cunt is 15. He's got a Confederate flag and he's chewing tobacco in his bedroom, wearing a camouflage hoodie, and then he starts talking about his guns. Guys, can we stop cancelling comedians for engaging with stereotypes? Some of those cunts are real. They're real. I didn't know that was a real person. A 15-year-old kid chewing tobacco with a Confederate flag in his bedroom, talking about his guns and drinking underage. Let's let's be real. Some stereotypes exist for a reason. That cunt's real. That's why that's a stereotype. Can we stop cancelling comedians for doing fucking stereotypes in on comedy? Man, it's it's so fucking It's nuts like seeing. Uh, all of these comedians getting cancelled, bro. Like, but by Netflix, like Netflix taking down Chris Lilly's seasons and TV series because he's done like brown face in them, I think is is bullshit for, for two reasons, right? Reason number one, uh, I I don't think you should be going through the fu- through fucking history and deleting stuff just because our standards change. I think that an appropriate response maybe if you were going to fuck with stuff that had something that is offensive by our standards is you do what Warner Brothers did uh, with with uh, with old Looney Tunes cartoons when because they obviously had like hardcore blatantly racist cartoons there like. Un, like undisputably, we made this to because we think black people are lesser. Like real racist cartoons, and instead of deleting them and denying that that shit ever happened, which is a mistake because when you fucking deny history and stop learning it, you're doomed to repeat it. Right? Very well known idea. That's why Holocaust museums exist. 
right? That's why we say lest we forget. That's why on 9-11 you say uh, uh, never forget, right? Because you don't want that shit to happen again, even though it was fucking horrific. You have to keep thinking about it, remembering it to stop it from happening again because the people that did those terrible things are us. We're not different from them. They're humans. Hitler was a guy. He didn't have powers. He didn't have something mentally wrong with him. He just had hate in his heart. I think that's what that's why people get so fucking scared about um, controversial opinions and terrible things and all this kind of shit. They want to get rid of it because they think it's... I don't know why they want to get rid of this shit. I understand getting rid of, like, pure racist, but getting rid of, like... Shit that was created to entertain and not uh, degrade races, basically, uh, is is my point. I think is silly. I think if you're going to modify it, what you should do is what Warner Brothers did. They, they took all their racist cartoons and shit. They didn't delete them. They didn't hide the fact that they made them. They said, this was made during this time period and people during these times thought this was acceptable. Us today, we know that it's not. We would never do this but to deny it is to be doomed to repeat it. They had some warning really well worded like that, which was, this is terrible today. Back then it was normal. We should know this to, to show that we progress and become better. I think maybe that's what they should do. Maybe to comedy that's offensive, but, but what the fuck is offensive? And I think the decision made by Netflix was so hollow because they knew about all this shit that Chris Lilly did for sure because cunts tried to cancel him for it when they paid him millions of dollars to make a series for them only a couple of years ago. And everyone starts losing their mind going, oh, how could you fund this? Look at what he's done. And Netflix goes, yeah, we know he did all that shit. That's why we're giving him a million dollars. We want him to do it for us. So now they're taking it off. It's fucking hollow. It's a money move. They don't give a fuck. The person who did that was not an artist, was not a comedian, didn't understand comedy. The person who did that was probably some PR executive, some cunt working in customer service. Oh, boss, a bunch of people are angry. We should take it down. It's it's fucking crazy. I think that with comedy, especially with comedy, you need to judge comedians on their intent, not your interpretation of what they said. It's like, I mean, it's, it's like personal life. Sometimes you will accidentally say something that really offends someone and hurts their feelings personally, but then you go, no, that's not what I meant. I meant this. And then the person goes, oh, well, as long as you meant that and not this. And you go, yeah, I meant this, not that. And then they go, oh, okay, well, then I guess it's fine. I think a lot of the time you can do that with comedy. Because, you know, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of argument to be made that I, I think I wouldn't do blackface today personally as a comedian. I wouldn't do it today because I can't think of a way to make it funny uh, is my view of it. But that's for me, you know. And I feel like you probably shouldn't be doing blackface. But to me, blackface is like dressing up as a race and going, look at me, I'm inferior. Like that, like the the traditional meaning of blackface. It was just dressing up as black people and going, oh, look, we're so dumb. Whereas if you're doing a character or inventing a character and wearing makeup to look like that character, it's, I don't know, I, it's definitely not as bad as that. I don't think I would do it, but I, but I wouldn't say that no one should ever do it because you never know how someone can do it. I mean, Tropic Thunder, I think, is a perfect example of someone doing blackface uh, in a way that I don't think is offensive at all because Robert Downey Jr., plays an actor who is playing a black guy wearing blackface and that creates a conversation with an actual black guy about why blackface is wrong and why this guy is racist. So is Robert Downey Jr. racist for doing that or is the character that Robert is playing racist? Do you see what I mean? If no one can play a character that plays somebody in blackface to talk about the ethics of blackface, how the fuck are you supposed to address it in comedy? 
And now a bunch of people are going to take it in context. Being like, well, Lewis Spears reckons you can only make, you can only discuss blackface while you're in blackface. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Imagine that though, a fucking debate over whether or not we should allow blackface, but every participant has to be wearing blackface. <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm saying, but that could be a funny sketch. You know what I mean? I don't know. There's an argument to be made about the Chris Lilly shit, especially uh, I'm talking around the time when he did Summer Heights High. That was like fucking... I mean, I was in like grade six, I think, when that was coming about, coming out. It was like a decade ago at least, right? More than a decade ago uh, when he was playing his his uh, Jonah character who was Tongan and like a, an Islander kid, you could make an argument that he was employing a fuckload of Islander kids to be his friends. He His show was almost much more representative than anything else that was made in Australia at that time in terms of getting Islander kids, Tongan kids into fucking TV and doing stuff. And he, I don't know, from when when I watched it, and memory might be hazy, he fucking addressed, like, issues that those communities faced. He had every single person that was not him was actually from that community. He clearly did his research about their cultural practices and shit like that. Um. So his intent was not racist. I understand people thinking the execution was, maybe, but his intent was absolutely not to be racist because if his intent was to, you know, do brown face and make Islanders look terrible because he hated them, I don't think he would hire them and give them money and do his research and try to make all of those characters human. I think he would just make them look fucking stupid while he, like, mimicked them or aped them, you know? Uh, I don't think the intent there is racist. It's just, like, it's just such shallow fighting uh, perceived racism. Meanwhile, actually racist people go under the radar. I think um, uh, Aboriginal guy in Australia, Briggs, said something really good about it. He just talk, he just added Netflix on Twitter and he said something on, along the lines of, in reference to getting Chris Lilly cancelled, he's like, this doesn't actually do anything. This is hollow. If you actually want to incite change and do something productive to fight racism, why don't you make a show about this community group and hire people from this community? If you're just fucking cancelling cunts uh, because white people were offended on their behalf... You're doing nothing. Um, so I don't know. I just think I just think it's silly going back and canceling shit. If you can't joke about racism, if you can't talk about race with comedy at all, how the fuck are you supposed to discuss it unless you're creating a documentary about the Holocaust? Like, really, there are so many ways to communicate in art uh, that isn't. Um, that is just boring, you know. So many, so many ways of communication. Uh, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say there. Comedy communicates better than any other art form, if you're trying to convey a message. So if you're trying to convey a message, uh, whether it's you know standing against racism, when is, whether it's making fun of racists, or whether it's just making fun of everybody and introducing the audience to different culture groups and their issues and making fun of them, and and doing so proves that they are just like us, like most comedies do, right? That is almost an incredibly effective tool against racism. If you start putting all of these fucking communities into boxes and say, oh, they're so fragile, you can never joke about them, one, people will never hear about them, so they'll never understand maybe why they have issues or they'll never understand what it's like to be them because they don't... If someone doesn't like watching the news and doesn't like watching documentary but they love watching comedy but the comedians cannot talk about this group, how the fuck is this person even going to understand anything about that group? You know, banning one art style from talking about a bunch of different groups is fucking ridiculous. It just makes them other, you know, and that's why I've always said with this podcast, with when you come to my shows, everyone's going to get it. 
If you're in a fucking wheelchair and I know you're going to be in the front row because that's where the disabled access is, you're going to fucking get it, bro. Um, and that's because I know that you're a fucking human and you can stand on your own two feet. Poor choice of words. <laughs> But you know what I mean. All right, I'm going to move on from this. I'm going to try to do something funny. Dude, I saw the funniest shit on Facebook. I Because obviously a lot of people are artists or creatives in my feed. I saw all of these people, and I keep seeing it, of creative people and artists uh, getting angry because all of this COVID and this corona shit flying around. There's always talk about non-essential and essential jobs. And I have so many fucking artists in my feed getting butt hurt because people keep saying that art and creative stuff and comedy and drawing and graphic design isn't essential. And all these people go, art is essential. All of these people who were saying that art isn't essential, everything you watch was created by an artist. Everything you wear was designed by an artist. Everything that's on your mug was designed by an artist. Everything we do was made by artists. We are essential. And I'm here to tell you, as an artist, hey, no, we're not. You're not that special. You tell dick jokes you're not essential. Graphic design is not essential. You want to talk essential? How about farmers? How about fucking bricklayers who build houses? How about doctors? Huh? That's essential. You fucking... Just because you're up yourself and you think that your art is the most important thing in the fucking world doesn't mean that it's essential. Do we not know what the word fucking essential means? You're not. You tell jokes. Sit down, bro. There are cunts building houses for the homeless. You're telling dick jokes for money. You're not essential. I know that. I know I'm the first to go, you know? If the zombie apocalypse happens, I got no skills, I'm loud as fuck, and I'm very clumsy. First one to go, because I'm not essential. What? When what? When the fucking when the fire starts in your house, who are you gonna call? The graphic designer or the firefighter? I know who I'm ringing. It's the cunt who has a special fucking emergency number because he's essential. Known as an emergency service. It's crazy that cunts think that uh, art is essential. It's not. And I'm saying that as an artist, right? I saw this in my feed because someone, like I've seen it shared so many times on Facebook, which is where you get all of the most true news. This survey, the Sunday Times asked some 1,000 residents about uh, what jobs are the most crucial and what jobs are the least crucial. So most essential and least essential. Top five essential jobs according to this poll. Doctor, yeah. Cleaner, yeah. Garbage collector, yeah. Hawker, I don't know what the fuck that is. What is a hawker? What the fuck's a hawker? Hawker, profession. Is he some kind who just catches hawks and sells them? That doesn't sound very essential to me. Hawker. A hawker is a vendor of merchandise that can be easily transported. Oh, like food. Yeah, yeah, okay, a hawker. Why do they just say food salesman, supermarket? Where are you going? I'm just going down to the hawker. Sounds like some dude who just like goes hawk and spits on the grass. That's disgusting. I'm sorry about that. It's going to get grosser when we get to the end of this podcast, I guarantee it. And then delivery man. Okay, well, this poll is fucking way off, all right? Top five essential jobs, let me tell you. Farmer, doctor, uh, builder. Uh, yeah, garbage man and comedian. <laughs> no, delivery man. I don't know. I can't believe that farmer wasn't on there. And then uh, the top five non-essential jobs, artist was number one, okay, which I'm totally on board with. We're non-essential. However, these other jobs that are clearly not essential as well, being uh, more essential than us, I got a little bit offended by. Telemarketer was number two. Are you really telling me that cunts selling health insurance over the phone are more important than me screaming about dicks on a podcast? I don't think so. I've been a telemarketer as well. We're not fucking essential. I've, I've had both those jobs. I feel like I'm contributing more screaming about dicks in a fucking garage. I think I'm doing more here. 
Uh, number three, social media manager, PR specialist. Well, fuck, now I'm feeling really bad because I am an artist and a social media manager, you know? I, I'm, a, I'm a guy who makes art on social media. I couldn't get any more fucking useless in the eyes of the world, could I? The only thing that could make me more useless would be if I also had no arms and no legs. Disabled artist and social media manager. That's going to ruffle a few feathers. <laughs> uh, business consultant? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty non-essential. Uh, this one I really don't agree with. Human resources manager. Mm. Do you really think that when the apocalypse happens, we should get rid of the guy that stops uh, rape from happening? <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, the fucking apocalypse happens. We The first thing we do is get rid of HR. I don't know about that. You know, like what's what's going to happen? You know, in, in all of the, uh, the essential hawking service, everyone's just going to start fucking their co-workers. That can't go on. We need HR. You know, we need that shit. I like how police officer is not on here at all, you know? What are these hawkers what are these what are these gonna what are these guys gonna do when someone starts breaking into their house and stealing all of their stuff they're about to hawk? They're gonna call the garbage collector? You need the cops, bro. I yeah, but dude, let's be real, okay? You're not essential. It's like, yeah, okay. All the, all these posts that are going viral, like, what would these people do when they're in quarantine if they didn't have their Netflix shows to binge on, if they didn't have their video games to play, if they didn't have their music to listen to, their podcasts to listen to, their jokes to enjoy, their memes. All of these things were created by artists. Hey, do you know what would happen if all of those things disappeared? Nothing. We would be bored. And that's all. That's the only thing that would happen. You know what would happen if I lost every single piece of art that was created in my life and ever would be created again? You know what I would you know what I would do? You know what would happen? I would go, I'm bored. That's all. You know what would happen if we lost all of the essential jobs? Doctors, nurses, grocers, farmers, builders. You know what would happen? You know what I would do? I would go, I'm dead. I would die, okay? Not essential. I'm sorry, but art is not essential. That's a luxury. You ever see cavemen, right, when they're trying to hunt down a dinosaur, stop for a quick little painting? No, you don't. That's why you, that's why you only see caveman art in caves. That's why they're called cavemen. I bet they, they didn't spend very much time in caves, but their art did. Because the minute they found that cave, they were like, oh, finally, I'm, I, can, I can sit down for a minute, stop running away from fucking dinosaurs and stop, stop all, of my, you know, all of my women from getting raped by other cavemen. I can sit down and do a little doodle, some non-essential activity. I can fucking relax a little bit, you know? I mean, fuck it. If, if this cave holds up, I might even install a HR department, get rid of all that rape. <laughs> I'm sorry, artist, but however much, however important it is to you, that doesn't mean that it's fucking essential. Can we get out of our own asses, please? There's such a trend of artists being like, man, I have 200,000 likes on Facebook. I have become essential. I really can't try and replace food with your paintings. Also, you're not an artist, right? You're fucking drawing tits. Um... All right, what am I what am I doing here? Stabbing my own industry in the back. Check. Um, speak. And here's another here's another fucking check against the arts. Right. Uh, you saw Nickelodeon just announced that SpongeBob is a member of the LGBTQI plus and all the other fucking characters community. Hey, hey. I don't need to know who SpongeBob fucks. Nobody needs to know who a sponge fucks, okay? Also, we all knew that he was gay, all right? The dude's covered in holes. And his stupid laugh just sounds like if you sped up a deep-throating video. That's what SpongeBob... That sounds like Riley Reid in two times speed, okay? I know that he's... I. He, it's like you don't need a fucking... Tell us. Not every cartoon character needs a sexuality. I'm not saying that there should be no representation in children's shows. I'm just saying we don't need to know who every cartoon character fucks. If they're clearly not like a human or an animal, I don't need to know who they're fucking. 
Also, can we please stop spitting on the art of dead artists, please? Stephen Hillenberg dies, right? He's got a whole statement out saying that uh, when someone asked him if SpongeBob's gay or straight, he said, oh, he's neither, right? So Nickelodeon is either, like, lying and saying that he's, or heavily implying that he's gay, or they're just going, that means he's non-binary. We can get some fucking points from that community that has front fringes. Chuck it up on Twitter, like cool Nickelodeon, great. You've 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 really uh you've really stood up for gay rights there. Hey, do you remember all of those TV shows that uh, had uh, underage girls putting their feet in their mouth? You want to clear that one up? Do you want to clear that one up while we're, while we're going back and addressing the uh, sexuality of old cartoon characters? Why don't we have a look at some of the uh, old Nickelodeon TV shows where we have lots of prepubescent women like Ariana Grande putting their big toe in their mouth? What's that all about, huh? Hey, Nickelodeon, do you want to address that? I think I would like to know what's going on there rather than how many dicks SpongeBob can fit in his holes. Hey, why don't we sort that one out? What's going on over there? Why was your logo a foot? For a long time. Too long. Hey? Eh? Why why for some reason was there one dude, right? Dan Schneider. Why for some reason for like decades did every single show he create have a lot of feet in there? Why was it for like a like a ten year period it looked like every time we turned on Nickelodeon we were watching a Quentin Tarantino film? Hey Nickelodeon, do you want to clear that one up? What's going on there? Why are there so many fucking feet in your films? Anyway, guys, what I'm trying to say is, who cares if SpongeBob's gay, right? Let's see some fucking feet. <laughs> That's crazy, though. You ever looked into that shit? Dan Schneider and uh, the Nickelodeon thing? That's a rabbit hole I've gone down too many times. That's one where you just, like, you end up screaming at the screen, being like, why the fuck did that guy work there for that long? Crazy fucking shit, dude. I saw, you know what really sold it for that Dan Schneider um, uh, foot fetish thing? The conspiracy is Dan Schneider, he had a production company that worked with Nickelodeon. They created all of the biggest shows. I don't really know the names of it because I didn't watch the shows, but like the one that Ariana Grande blew up on, there's like footage of her putting her feet in her mouth. Uh, There's so much footage of her and Jeanette McCurdy as well. All of the like young, young female stars just doing like feet stuff that was haha not sexual like gross like putting like fucking ketchup on their feet and putting their feet right up to the camera and just way too much feet shit right uh and then stuff like dan snyder this is what sold it for me i was like oh well i guess it could be just a weird trademark i guess but then uh when he puts on his twitter oh there's a new episode of whatever the fuck i'm making at the moment Write this on your feet and tweet it at me. Someone will win a prize. I'm like, and uh, he likes underage feet. That fucking nailed it for me. I was like, okay, he loves feet. That's fucking weird. Man, we've been going for about 40 minutes here. Um, Is this a good episode 200? I feel so fucking weird doing this. I was like, oh, I want, I normally I do a live show every 50 episodes. I do like a live show because that's about a year. But now I'm just sitting here about to upload an hour long rant about Nickelodeon putting way too many feet on their screens to my main channel. Be like, this is Spearhead Sundays. You should listen. Hey, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe this isn't for you. Maybe I should stop. I don't know, man. This is what the podcast is. I never promised it was going to be amazing. All I said it was that it was going to be fucked, and I think I'm delivering on that fucking promise. Anyway, do you guys want to see my feet? No. All right. Obviously not. I'm 26. I'm too old. Um, where are we? Okay. Uh. I think it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. Guys, if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end, it's the worst part of the podcast. It's the part of the show where I answer life advice questions sent in by you, the loyal listener, or you, the person who was listening to this for the first time going, I can't believe he hasn't been fucking cancelled for all of this shit. This is horrific. (laughs) Why is anyone letting this happen? And you know what? To be honest, I don't know, and I won't apologise for it. Um, So uh, it's the part of the podcast where I answer life advice sent in by uh, people 
people who listen to the show. And uh, I think you've got a good gauge if you've been listening for the past 40 minutes. Anyone who listens to this show, a little bit fucked in the head. So I get some horrific emails just about every week, and I've been saving up the most horrific emails. Podcast at loosebeers.com is the email to send you your questions to. And this one shocked me. And if you've uh, listened to this, you've had a little bit of a uh, glimpse into my browser history. Oh, that's right. I wanted to talk about that Omegle bitch that I really offended. Oh, I talked about that in the first five minutes and it's been 40 minutes. And I haven't finished my story. Fuck, man. See, it all comes back around. This, this whole podcast is like a big fucked boomerang covered in, covered in dicks and pedophile conspiracy theory, right? So I'm on Omegle. And uh, we see that kid from West Virginia who's like, oh, Confederate flag, Southern pride, I don't have black friends, right, that kid. And then we move on, we see like 35,000 dicks, and then we move on and we find this like uh, of age, surprisingly Canadian, no, a Canadian girl, yeah. And, uh, and it's just so funny. I was reminded when I went to America and I just offended so many strangers just speaking how I do. Like I'm Australian, I swear all the time, I say cunt, Heaps. It's like an endear. It's a term of endearment. If I call you a cunt, bro, you're my you're my friend. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were talking about America because she had a lot of American friends, and I was like, oh man, those cunts are going crazy, aren't they? They got protests. They got the corona thing. Those cunts are going nuts. And she just stops. And she gets so offended. And she goes, um, those those cunts are my friends. <laughs> and then hangs up. <laughs> And say, bro, they're my friends too. That's why I'm calling them cunts. No, nah, she didn't get it. Offended so many people when I was in New York by just going, yeah, those cunts over there. And they're like, hey, what did you say? And then those cunts over there will be like, what the fuck did you say? I'm like, I called you cunts. What did you say? Oh, i got to tone it down. Right. So uh, I've got uh, this email and I'm going to read the subject line. And uh, yeah, look, this... this uh, I think this is how we're going to end this episode with just this one fucking email. What I'm going to do is this email is so horrific. I actually need my girlfriend to help me read it out. I'm going to read you the subject line and then I'm going to go and get my girl because I need some fucking backup, right? Subject line. And and uh, I've read this, read it all. Hey, it's real. Subject line. My boyfriend feeds me cum. <laughs> That's a fucking banger sentence. I don't really need anything more than that, right? But it gets worse. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to go grab my girl and we're going to read this out together and you are going to be just as scarred as me. Let's go. Episode 200, my boyfriend feeds me cum. All right, welcome Jazz to episode two hundred. Yeah, go. I'm so happening. excited to be here. Yeah, I was having just a wonderful, quiet, relaxing night. Yeah. in my house. Yeah, and then my, my boyfriend. Our house. Mm, my house. You have the garage. Yeah, I have studio. the house. It's a studio. Is it? Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't see any cars. I don't see any cars. <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> Because there's a draft, because there's ventilation, because if you were to put a car in here, so you'd need somewhere for the exhaust to go. Mm -hmm. But without the car, it just lets cold air in. But it's no longer there's no car, so it's not a garage. I would argue that maybe Keelan is a car. In fact, he's a transformer, and he's been tricking us all along. Really? And by Keelan, <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> and um, by that checkmate, it's a garage. He did say brum brum. He I've said been brum brum. Defeated, right. Jazz, I've uh, I've brought you in. I know you're in a good mood. I'm about to ruin it. Mm. <laughs> I would really rather not. Well, uh, I've brought you in here too. So this email came in. Yeah. A month ago, must yeah, have been a month ago. Yeah, twenty seventh of May. This one, I've been saving it for a while. Yeah, and he reads it, and he goes, oh, 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 oh. and I just know that somewhere in my future, I'm going to be disgusted <laughs> and you, appalled. Yes, you are. Uh, now, you don't even know the subject line of this one. I don't think I told you. Like, can I Can I ask you? Yeah. Is it better or worse than racism in America? Uh, way worse. It's way worse. Yeah, and I think that, that when I read this out, mm -hmm. all of the riots in America are actually going to stop. No, yeah. they continue, but they'll all change what's written on their banners. Yeah. And they're going to hear this and then they're going to go, 
this is way more important. And they're going to go, stop this bitch. And is this miscellaneous bit at the end? Yes. Yeah. So not Most only the will they be protesting this email, they'll also be protesting to stop miscellaneous bit at the end. Yes, yeah, because it is the worst part of this podcast. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely top three most horrific emails. I don't know if it's the worst. Top I've, three. I've read some terrible things on this on this show. Okay, so no last time I was on for a miscellaneous bit, yeah. there was a guy who hooked up with a disabled person on Grindr. Yeah, and then the, disabled, yes. The, <laughs> Yep. The guy's mental, the mentally disabled guy's mum yep. stalked him and said, "Never have sex with my mentally disabled son ever again." <laughs> yeah, that's and he was pretty like, bad, pretty bad. Yeah, he was like, "But I took a Viagra. What else was I meant to do?" Yep. So uh, that so that's okay. if you're a new listener, so, which there will be a lot of people. That's the type of realm that we're playing in. This one's up there with that. Is it better or worse? Uh, you tell me. Okay. okay? The subject line. All right. I'm Are ready. you ready? I'm ready. Subject line. My boyfriend feeds me cum. <laughs> right? Now, <laughs> you might be thinking, that sounds bad, but it's not that bad. Wait till I begin. Okay, so does he put it in a spoon? You're about to find out. Wait, does he go, here comes the, here comes the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. I don't like that at all. He totally does, No, I don't he? like that. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Let's find out. G'day, Lewis. Call me Sarah. I've got a fuck story for you, and judging by what I've seen from the episodes I've watched so far, this is the perfect place to share it. She's not wrong. This happened late last year before the whole COVID fiasco. Oh, that's good. At least you're being uh, social distancing, right, while you eat cum. That's good. Um, you can only eat cum from 1.5 metres away. <laughs> going to chuck it. It's probably frozen. Catch! That's disgusting. I feel sick. Uh this happened last year before the whole COVID fiasco. My boyfriend revealed to me that he has a very strange fetish in which he gets off on me eating his jizz. At first, I didn't think it was too weird, like me, right? But as it turns out, it was more complex than that. He wanted me to eat food that literally had his cum on it. <laughs> now, I've, now, I've swallowed before. Right? I like I love that she's rationalizing it in the email. I, now I've swallowed before. This is written okay, by like, okay. like an essay. Do you know what do you know what you're eating? That is the literal definition of dumb bitch juice. You are sipping <laughs> on this guy's cum. That is dumb bitch juice right there that you hey, are eating. You don't know, it might be a dumb bitch smoothie. <laughs> you don't know how she's how she's cooking you it up. Shake that dumb bitch all over your fries and Yeah, mm. fuck. Oh, uh, that's disgusting. Um but weirdly, not as disgusting as the rest of this email. Um, he wanted me to eat food that literally had his cum on it. Now, I've swallowed before, but only because he enjoyed it. Definitely not because I like the taste. Regardless, I agreed to let him do it once. Who knows? Maybe it wouldn't be as bad as I imagined it. Now, that's that's why women deserve more rights than men. Because I highly doubt there would be many soldiers out there, many men that would do that for their partner. But this woman, this absolute soldier is going, you know what? He's into it. I'll give it a try. Let's get this cum covered cake going. <laughs> Keelan's fucking disgusted. Keelan found you next Keelan's millions. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, who knows? Maybe it wouldn't be bad as, as bad as I imagined. Cut ahead to a few days. I went to his place. I was at his place and he was eager to feed me in quotation marks. He ordered Carl's Jr. <laughs> the fucking burger joint. Carl's Jr. That's how we wanted to start. He could have picked any food on the planet, but he's like, you know what? More mayonnaise on that bun. Let's go. He ordered Carl's Jr. And right before my eyes, he lifted the bun off my burger, jacked off and jizzed right onto the patty and closed it back up. <laughs> At least he's got the presentation down. You know what I was thinking about is reading while I was reading this email. I don't think I could come if I could also smell burger. <laughs> I don't think I could do both those things. If I smelled, you know, if I like, I don't think I could come in a Macca's. You know, like that's some. Um, although I'm you see still, a lot of homeless guys I'm still do it. laughing it's about possible. him jacking off on the bun. I know. <laughs> I got. Uh. Was it? Was it like? Uh, did did he get Uber Eats so it was like not kind of a little bit cold as well? <laughs> the burger? That's filthy. Um he ordered jizzed on the on the patty and closed it back up. Um 
fuck, maybe that's what, maybe that's the secret Krabby Patty recipe. Um, I was lost for words. All I could think about was the fact that I was going to eat a, a fucking cum whopper. And so, and so I, <laughs> the burgers are better when I come inside them. Uh, and so I bit into it and almost immediately I could taste the extremely distinct taste. I finished it and honestly, by the end, it was actually hard to tell that it was even there. He was very pleased, of course, and said it was the hottest thing he'd ever seen. The hottest thing he's ever seen is watching someone eat a burger. This man needs a, needs a head check. I said that. Oh, I, you just figured that out, did you? Oh, yeah. Just it wasn't now. the the. I mean, the if whole it was in a salad, concept, that's fine. It wasn't you know, asking salad, someone same else. Thing. It was that he thought that was hotter. So you, you think he should have seen it? Yeah. Yeah, didn't make the top ten. No, I, I think that that he should have seen that and gone, oh, it's just a bitch eating a burger. There's well, nothing here's special the thing, about it. The already... idea of it, I can understand people getting off to the idea of like anything, but then the actual act and be like, yeah, that's definitely my shit. There's plenty of things that you think you might be into, then you try it and you're like, ah, oh, I'm not that type of person. Imagine, well, okay, in, imagine for her if she did that and then he goes, mm, wasn't really what I thought it would be. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, right? Imagine that. Mm, it wasn't like, should we try it again? How offended yeah. How offended would you be <laughs> if you ate someone's cum in a burger and then they went, actually, that's not my thing. <laughs> I don't like that at all, actually. That's fucking disgusting. And then for the rest of your relationship, you that sits between you. Like mm. whenever they want to try something new, like, hey, I was thinking of trying this. It's like, cunt, the last time you wanted to try something new, I had to eat a cum burger and you didn't even get a boner. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. He already came, so what's in it for him? Yeah, right? Yeah. That's a, that's a fuck. I mean, that's an interesting round two, isn't it? <laughs> mm. It's like, oh, let's I go mean, for round two. Most it's guys like, can't, can't even baby. get it up after they come. So what's he, he's just sitting there with a limp dick watching her eat the burger. Yeah, that's fucking strange, isn't it? Like that's a, that's a weird way to get a round two. Normally you've got to wait half an hour. This guy needs to watch her eat it in a burger. <laughs> Whatever gets you there, man. No judgment from me. Um, he said uh, it was the hottest thing he'd ever seen. I said that I would be up to doing it again, seeing how he really seemed to enjoy it. What a saint this woman is. And it actually wasn't as bad as I envisioned it. Not a saint. Dumb bitch. Well, Jasmine, yes. we're only halfway through the email. Right? You know, this this woman, you know, she she's turned over a new leaf. Fast forward to today, and we're both completely obsessed with it. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're going to start up a restaurant. What? <laughs> Wait, both- I thought this email was going to end with so. Um, yeah, I couldn't. We couldn't really look each other in the eyes after that, nope. and we broke it off. Nope. And now this is my secret shame. That's why I'm telling it to you, a stranger on the internet. Well, maybe they're both listening to this fucking jacking off into their salad <laughs> while they're eating a burger. Yeah. <laughs> And that's going to be the new fetish, I know. spearhead Sundays and cum burgers. <laughs> that's disgusting. On Sundays. I'm not accepting Except any. Except when it doesn't come out on Sundays. When, when shows Lewis, come back. whenever you miss the yeah. podcast, you prevent this couple from simultaneously orgasming. Good, because that, that <laughs> makes them less likely to have children. These cunts are going to raise kids. In they're the not having the children. They're eating the cum. That's true. Thankfully, you they're not procreating. Pregnant, can you? <laughs> Fast forward today and we're both completely obsessed with it. Over time, I got desensitised to the taste. Though I still wouldn't say I enjoy it, uh, I would be lying if I said I didn't find it hot. Since the cum burger, he served me uh, food ranging from cum ice cream to cum Pringles. Who the fuck's coming in a Pringles can? You're only going to get it on the top Pringle. That's not efficient at all. I'm sure he probably spread them out. That's disgusting. I feel sick. I did it in the can, shook it up. Is this a good advertisement to get people to listen to my podcast? I'm putting this on my main channel. Why? I don't know. (laughs) It's episode 200 and I want more people to listen to it. I think I'm going to get less listeners. (sighs) This is horrid. Um... Uh, cum burger, he's served me cum ice cream, cum Pringles and cum salads. Oh, I guess the Caesar salad. You're right. I'm not sure if this is better or worse than the having gay sex with the mentally disabled guy because 
at least these two are consenting, but I think there's a chance that they are both mentally disabled. Maybe. I mean, she's got really good grammar, so <laughs> maybe it's making it's all her the smarter. extra protein. <laughs> it's essential amino acids. We're really on the same wavelength with this. Maybe that's the <laughs> secret. You know, if you're struggling with to, to send Lewis, in that university Lewis, essay, I've got the secret. Just to stop you now, yeah? this is never going to happen. Why the fuck do you think I would read this out? You Did just you said we're on the same wavelength that yeah, it could make me disgusting. smarter. <laughs> this is horrible. Do you think that do you really think that this is how I would introduce you to my most deepest, darkest secret by recording it? Well, how did how did he introduce her? He just came on a burger one day. I guess. I mean, I mean, that's a pretty good way to introduce it is with, like, Carl's Jr. That is a good burger. If you introduce it with, like, a Big Mac, that's kind of disrespectful. Yeah, that would be like, mm, Big Mac you know? was a, it wasn't that good. The meat patty wasn't fresh. The yeah. cum sauce was a bit uneven. Right? Mm. I mean, if, if he really had money, he'd take it a Nobu. <laughs> <laughs> That'd get you kicked out. You'd lose your reservation, wouldn't you? Oh, fuck. Um... Where uh, the oh there we go ice cream Pringles and salads the only thing that I physically could not handle was this one time he came into a bowl for me to dip my Macca's chips into he called it it doesn't go with Macca's does it imagine that shit dipping it like it's fucking garlic aioli sauce okay so so far they've done this like at least six times oh, absolutely I think that uh. I don't know how long this. So she emailed me 27th of May, and she said this started before Corona. Corona started like February, March. So this has been going on for months and months. Mm hmm. This mm -hmm. is nuts. Look, with the amount of stuff that's happening in the world <laughs> at the moment, I think that I just can't fully process this. <laughs> That's just, this is the thing that broke the, the, the last thing, straw. The only thing that I couldn't handle was the time he tried to get me <laughs> dip my Macca's chips into it. You know what you should try? Yeah, Let's I mean, some, come up with some recipes for them. Uh, no. What about, uh, I mean, that would make a pretty interesting episode of Cooking Without Instructions, <laughs> wouldn't it? I think I'd have to upload that to Pornhub. That's not going to – that's getting demonetized at the very minimum. <laughs> uh, she goes, I don't know, something about that combination made my body gag at the taste. Anyway, I hope this fuck story has at least entertained you. I hope none of your listeners are eating right now, though that would probably suck. Cheers, Lewis. Have a preferably cumless shit one. That is horrific, Sarah. Thank you very much for sending that in. I shouldn't know this. The amount of shit that, that I should not know about people's personal life when they email this show is really, I feel like uh, this is, you know what this is? This segment of the podcast, it really is the Jerry Springer of podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like th like before this podcast, this couple would be on Jerry Springer and they'd be like, hi, I'm Sarah and I and my boyfriend feeds me his calm. And then it'd show her like slow motion, black and white, dipping Macca's chips into garlic aioli. Disgusting, guys. Absolutely filthy. You should be ashamed of yourselves, and I'm glad to have you as a listener. That's my demo, isn't it, guys? Well, I, ca it I can't seems, top sounds that. like it's Lewis approved. I no, absolutely not approved. <laughs> uh, let me get this straight. That is filthy. All right, but each to their own. As long as uh, as long as it's consensual, there's go a for lid it. for every pot. <laughs> Even if that pot is full of dumb bitch juice. Yeah, fuck, man. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for supporting the show on Patreon. You get it early, uh, as always, if you support me on Patreon. Episode 200, if that was your first episode and for some reason you want more of this this shit, uh, check out the Spearhead Sundays podcast YouTube channel. That's where all future episodes will be going. And thank you so much for 200 episodes of this, man. I didn't really think that when I was like some broke idiot in my bedroom yelling into a terrible USB mic or sometimes recording it on my phone that we that we would ever get to this position. Uh, the content is still just as horrific as it was, but uh, at least uh, I can afford to wear clothes. And we've upgraded to a garage. Yeah, we're yeah. getting there, guys. Yeah. We're getting there. And uh, all the podcast listeners, man, thank you so much. You guys have been with me since uh, since day one of this stuff and still to this day, my most loyal fans, my most loyal uh, people who support what I do. So thank you very much for 200 episodes. I'm very sorry that because of Corona, I couldn't do like a, a live event or, or something really big. I could just do this. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that email makes up for 
anything that I could have done, I think we can all agree that that was much more spectacular and like spectacular in the in the plane crash kind of way, not the this is good. So, uh, I, I'll, <laughs> fuck, man. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Thank you very much. Have a shit one.